this is E658 lecture 11 right so in the last class we saw uh, why it makes sense to use uh, I mean we were, in the last class we were talking about characterizing sample and holes okay and we saw that uh, we, we should choose an input frequency such that <coughs> There are an integral number of uh, input cycles within within one full record length. Okay, the record length uh, refers to the number of samples you take to compute the FFT. All right, and if uh, and we saw that even a slight discrepancy in the in the uh, uh, input frequency relative to uh, you know the the even if there are if the frequency is off by a very very small amount, you will see disastrous effects when you compute the FFT and this is uh, happening because we saw that if your input tone lies, uh, I mean satisfies this condition F in by Fs is small m by capital M, then uh, we, we saw that when you uh, take um, a record, one record of this input periodic input signal which has been sampled, the resulting sample sequence is also periodic which means that it uh, the uh, when you uh, find its spectrum I mean you saw that the uh, DFT is nothing but disc, I mean uh, samples of the uh, discrete Fourier transform and when you take this uh, discrete sequence and I mean this periodic sequence and multiply it by a rectangular window the uh, the discrete Fourier transform of this uh, finite length sequence uh, is simply the impulse convolved with the Fourier transform of the rectangular window which is uh, the form sin of m omega by 2 divided by sin omega by 2 and uh, this goes to 0 at every 2 pi by m. So, when you convolve the, uh, the impulse which corresponds to the discrete Fourier transform of the, uh, of the uh, input signal with the uh, response of the window, you see that and you sample it at 2 pi by m, you find that you are sampling the, uh, I mean rather you are sampling the Fourier transform of this windowed sequence exactly at So, if the input frequency is right, you are sampling exactly at uh, these points. Uh, when you plot the DFT uh, coefficient magnitudes, you will find that you have only one peak sticking out and all the others in principle should be 0. In practice, there will be some 10 to the minus, uh, you know, 10 to the minus 15, 10 to the minus 16 type numbers which correspond to machine precision. Hmm? On the other hand, if the input frequency is slightly off, what actually happens is that uh, I mean the sink is uh, what do you call I mean uh, the uh, it's the I'm still sampling at these points, okay. However, the sink is slightly shifted away, okay, and you don't catch the uh, you don't sample the uh, the uh, the sink at the nulls and the peaks. You sample them at locations which are slightly away, which basically causes this the so-called Eiffel Tower. And the closer the uh, input frequency is to this. Uh, multiple uh, small m by capital M times f in uh, times f s you know, the uh, the smaller or rather the uh, the lower the Eiffel Tower effect will be. Hmm? Is it clear to everybody? All right. And this is uh, an experiment you can you know uh, you can do in like half uh, half a minute uh, once you have uh, MATLAB. Hmm? All right. So the uh, so, as I said this is often called uh, if f n by f s is of the form small m by capital M, this is often called synchronous sampling or also coherent sampling. And as I said, this can be enforced by uh, you know 
basically by uh, buying sufficiently expensive boxes where uh, you know you have two uh, uh, signal sources which have this provision that they can be I mean one can be made dependent on the other all right so you can actually uh, get a box uh, which generates fs and then you can instruct the other box generating fn to be equal to you know whatever 129 by 1024 times fs and uh, there is a there is a feedback loop which makes that happen you understand so uh, I mean it is like uh, you and your friend have watches which if left alone would drift away but if you made it a point to uh, talk to each other every morning and every night and make sure that both your uh, both your watches read the same then you know <coughs> I can be sure that at any time you know whether I look at your watch or your friend's watch there is no error I mean, between the between the two of them. Hmm? So that is the uh, story on uh, synchronous sampling or coherent sampling and this is commonly done with uh, you know high speed AD, AD converter testing. Clearly if I just chop off you know uh, a record length of the uh, sampled output sequence and do an FFT what do you what would I expect in all likelihood? I mean I set the dial on the uh, on the box to 129 divided by 1024 times fs okay and then I capture 1024 samples and do an fft. Uh, what would you expect to see in the fft? You will see I mean so without synchronous sampling without coherent sampling when I do when I plot the magnitude of the uh, FFT <coughs> what I probably see is, is something like this you understand and uh, so this is happening because Fn is not equal to m by m times Fs in other words Fn does not lie on a frequency bin. So, you know that uh, you know fs by uh, the whole fs is divided into m bins ok. So, if the input does not is not exactly f, uh, you know fs by m times small m then the input is not lying exactly on the on that grid. Alright, it's saying lying somewhere between two points. So it's often called, often referred to as Fn does not lie on a frequency bin. So, and this phenomenon where you see this stuff, uh, this uh, this Eiffel Tower, is also called FFT leakage. Because energy which is supposed to be confined to one bin is now spread across spread across many many bins ok. So, energy is so called is leaking off from the uh, bin it is supposed to be in. So, this is called FFT leakage does it make sense alright once uh, so let us get some quick uh, time domain intuition into why this uh, FFT leakage is happening. So, uh, if there is exactly let me assume that this sine uh, this sine wave is periodic with 10 cycles I mean 10 10 seconds let me just so this is 10 units ok. So, if I sample this at a rate uh, uh, of I am sorry uh, this is uh, periodic with a period of 10 units which is equivalent to saying the, the frequency of the sine wave is uh, 0.1 hertz alright and I am sampling it at a rate 1 hertz ok. Now, uh, clearly if I take I mean when I compute the discrete Fourier series of this uh, sequence of uh, 10 points ok. What do I see? Uh, what will I see? I will see only a I will see a I will see a single tone and all the other coefficients all the other 9 coefficients should I mean uh, uh, there out of the 10 coefficients 2 of them will be 1 because 
uh, anything between 0 and fs by 2 is a mirror image of the other half. Hmm, we saw this the last time around. So, uh, but all the other coefficients corresponding to the other harmonics will all be 0. Hmm? And why is that so? Because what the, uh, the discrete Fourier series is doing is taking a sequence and making a periodic extension of it and computing the when I take an FFT of a sequence, what is implicitly implied is the following. I have a sequence, I make a periodic extension of it, alright, and then compute the Fourier series of the periodic extension. Is that clear? That's what we are doing. Hmm? On the, okay, now let's see what happens, let's get time domain intuition as to why this happens when the, the uh, sinusoidal frequency is not exactly does not like exactly lie on a bin. Okay? So, in other words, what happens, let me take a slightly, a sinusoid with a slightly different frequency. Alright? Which is what would happen if the, uh, the input and, uh, you know, if the input source and the clock source were not, didn't have this magic relationship between them. And uh, uh, not knowing this when I, I mean, that this is the case, I will still continue to take my 10 samples and compute an FFT. Right? So, the new samples now are therefore this, 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 this. And what is the FFT doing? When I compute the FFT, what am I doing? I am making a periodic extension of this, this sequence the, uh, which is uh, you know in the red circles. I am computing the Fourier series of that periodic wave. Correct? So, when I make the periodic extension, where should the next sample start? I should start from 0. So, what I am doing is basically computing the ok. So, what I have I am just drawing the continuous time waveform just for you to get some intuition, right. In reality all that there is is that, all that you have are the samples, nothing else. You understand? Ok. So, if you took a tone with the correct frequency and made a periodic extension, what do you see here? The black curve, if I made a periodic extension, what would I see? I will see a sine wave without any discontinuity. Whereas here, what do I see now? Just for the uh, red guy, there is a discontinuity, right? I mean, clearly you can see that, I mean, the stuff jumps. And you know that whether I take the, I mean, whether I take the Fourier series of uh, 10 samples starting from here, alright, or 10 samples starting from here, the magnitude of the coefficients must still remain the same, alright. So, when there is a big discontinuity here, what can you expect the Fourier series to have? When you have a discontinuity, it is like adding a blip, okay, at that particular point. So, it is like adding an impulse at some point in time, right? And an impulse has got all frequency components, ok? Which means it will cause, when you make a Fourier series of uh, periodic impulse, it will have all frequency tones. So, that explains why in the time domain, there you will see, <coughs> that is one, that is another way of understanding why you see leakage in the effort. You understand? So, it is this discontinuity is what causes FFT leakage. If the uh, sine wave frequency is not, if you do not have integral number of sine wave cycles, input sine wave cycles in uh, uh, in a record length of uh, sampling cycles, right? So, consider the the black curve here. The black curve is, the black sinusoid is such that there is exactly one cycle of the input in 10 cycles of the clock, right? 
The red sinusoid on the other hand has got only, I don't know, say, uh, has got only say 80% of the cycle in 10 cycles of the sampling clock. Correct? So, if you only took 10, 10 sample, I mean, uh, what do you call 10 samples of the uh, sampled red sinusoid and did a Fourier expansion of, I mean, if I computed its discrete Fourier, discrete time Fourier series, then what the discrete time Fourier series is doing is simply taking that uh, 10 point sequence, making it, a, making a periodic extension of this and computing the, the coefficients of the Fourier series of the, of this periodic sequence. Does that make sense? Alright? And because there are not an integral number of cycles in the input, in, te, in uh, 10 cycles of the clock, there is a, there is a discontinuity at the edge. Okay? And when you have a discontinuity, things are rising up very quickly, which basically means that there must be a lot of high frequency components in the signal, which basically means that you must expect a lot of FFT leak. So, in summary, if there were, there were so many points in the record and if I uh, just joined the points, point, I mean, uh, each sample to the next, for coherent sampling, this is exactly how one record, I mean, this is how a record might look. For non-coherent sampling, this is how a record might look. This is one record length of samples. We have understood the cause now. So, we have to figure out what to do to fix it, right? I mean, as I said, in many cases, it is not possible to have the input, it is not possible to do coherent sampling. So, where the input uh, frequency and the clock frequency are related by some magic number. And in such cases, you will have this situation where in one record length, you will not have a, you will have discontinuity at the ends, okay? So, any suggestion on what I might be able to do uh, to fix this problem? It should be yeah, but then, uh, okay, so what uh, he is suggesting is the following, right? You, uh, you add some empty space between these two, then the next period will start somewhere from here, okay? And between these two, you artificially construct the, the sinusoid. That's, that's uh, the bottom, I mean, is that what you are saying? Okay, alright. So, what is the, I mean, sure, when you take this looks a lot more like a clean sine wave than what we had earlier. But, there is a problem because this is now being done in software. It is not being done by, I mean, this is not what you, this is not what the circuit is giving. Ah, so, one, uh, uh, you know, one uh, uh, way of doing it is to say, I will, you know, visually look at one record length. Okay, and, uh, you know, I know that I am short by so many points. So, I will increase the record length until it looks like a sine wave. You understand? But obviously, there is difficulty with, there is obviously difficulty with looking at a sine wave and figuring out if it is uh, this thing. Because if I gave you a sine wave at 129 by 1024 times fs, I gave you the samples and I gave you a sine wave at 129.01 times uh, divided by 1024 times fs, I would bet that none of us would be able to figure out the difference between the two samples. Okay. So, this looking at it and figuring out if uh, and tweaking the record length such that uh, it exactly matches is, is obviously a, while the idea is, uh, is sound, okay, you see uh, obviously there is some practical difficulties with it, right. There is no scientific way of figuring out whether it's a clean sine wave or not, except by doing the the DFT. You understand? Okay. So anything else? Yeah. So uh, that's another uh, 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 you know point being put po uh, put forth is that uh, okay? You do this for a record length. Uh, this record length. You look at the FFT. Uh, it looks dirty. Uh, so I'll change the record length until you know this uh, the FFT kind of looks better and better and better. Alright, but uh, clearly again, uh, you know, that is also a flawed strategy simply because let us say you have only, uh, uh, you know, say a record, the maximum record that you have, the record length that you have is, uh, is say 10,000 points, for example. And 
we uh, if fn was 129.01 divided by 1024 times fs okay the only record length that will make have an integral completely integral number of cycles is 102400 points does that make sense okay so and we don't have so many samples so clearly that doesn't work either all right so what uh, so what is done is the following so we know that the guy is causing the the uh, the trouble are the fellows at the ends right these two guys aren't talking to each other that's the problem okay pardon no no if you offset it the uh, the uh, the uh, now if i if i add dc offset nothing can happen to the spectrum right i only get one more tone at dc okay so what do you do so the the problem is uh, these blemishes here so what do you do <coughs> you multiply this sequence since i mean instead of taking a uh, instead of waiting so obviously you want to give a lot of importance to the data in the middle right and reduce the importance to the data at the ends okay so instead of multi instead of i mean uh, multiplying it with a rectangular window is equivalent to giving the same amount of importance to all the samples so for example if i multiplied this by uh, a window whose which was like this rather than something so what we be excuse me what we been doing all along is multiplying it by the periodic sequence by a window which is in by a rectangular window which is shown in blue right where all the samples are deemed to be equally important but we know that there is you know trouble brewing at the end so you don't want to take those samples seriously so what you do is therefore is to deemphasize these samples at the end in some manner okay all right and one way of doing it is to come up is to use not a so called rectangular window but to use a window where there is more emphasis for these points sitting in the middle and lesser and lesser emphasis for points that are out there in the end and in this particular example the emphasis for the end points is actually zero okay and when you multiply anything by zero it is zero so even if there is a discontinuity okay the discontinuity vanishes because i multiplied this by zero so many window shapes are possible so i mean if all that i want is something which is high here and zero at the ends okay i can come up with an infinite number of windows right so uh, and as you might imagine there are like an infinite number of papers uh, talking about various windows which you can use all right and uh, uh, these all these things go under the name of spectral windows and the rectangular window is one special case all right and if a sequence has got a step discontinuity how will its spectrum roll off at high frequencies if you have something like this how does the uh, spectrum fall off magnitude of the spectrum fall off as the magnitude falls off as 1 over f correct because if i differentiate this once i get an impulse if i have a sequence with a discontinuity right if i differentiate it once i get an impulse differentiation is multiplying by you know j2 pi f right i mean in continuous time in uh, similar thing in discrete time right if i do first difference i will lead to z to the minus whatever right so and the impulse will give me a flat spectrum it will give me something is independent of frequency so if i have a first order discontinuity uh the spectrum will roll off as 1 over omega 1 over f okay if uh, the slope is discontinuous then it will go off as 1 over f square so if the whatever n minus 1 slope is uh, discontinuous it will go off as you know or f to the power n or whatever you understand so so if i take this sequence and multiply it by a window of this form
all right what do you think will happen to the uh, to the modified sequence no no how does the sequence look it will look high here i mean uh, here it will be zero correct here also it will be zero you understand it will do this okay and then uh, we'll kind of do this and do this does make sense so this is the original sequence s of n this is the window sequence w of n and this is the composite sequence s of n multiplied by window of n okay so and as we discussed the dft of or the uh, the fft of s of n times w of n is a sampled version of a sampled version of what of the dft of s of n multiplied by w of n and this the dft of s of n times w of n is nothing but the is the impulse corresponding to the sinusoid okay convolved with so delta function convolved with the dft of the window if i had a rectangular window of m samples the uh, the fourier transform of the the dft of the uh, rectangular window is basically we calculate it to be sin m omega by 2 divided by sin omega by 2 okay and clearly for large frequency this goes off as 1 over omega hmm all right so now if i had a triangular window what do you think so if i okay what will you get i will get sin square how did you get the sin square ah it to convolve two rectangular windows then you will get sin square but uh, each rectangular window has to be how how wide half as wide so what will you get ah uh, huh? m omega by 4 sin square omega by 2 does it make sense okay so what can you uh, so this goes off as 1 over omega so and what so what does this go off as 1 over omega square but can you comment on uh, how wide the main lobe this is called the main lobe by the way okay all right so can you comment on the width of the main lobe m by 4 versus uh, m by 2 the main width the main lobe will be wider okay but it will fall off faster okay so you can expect the uh, window width to be wider so this goes off as 1 over omega square but the main lobe is wider okay and a little thought will show you that this is i mean nothing uh, great with respect to this particular window all right you you always have to trade off 
मेन लोब विट पर साइड लोब फॉल ऑफ ओके सो मेन लोब विट वर्स साइड लोब हाइट दैट्स दी दैट्स दी ट्रेड ओके सो गिवन दिस नाउ आई मीन यू कैन राइट यू कैन राइट अ बिजिलियन कम अप विद अ बिजिलियन विंडोज वेर डिपेंडिंग ऑन वॉट यू वॉन्ट टू ट्रेड ऑफ you know which uh, whichever way you want so uh, the popular windows are of course uh, this is called the triangular window i think if i'm not mistaken and if i think it's got some name i think it's called the bartlett windows i'm not sure hmm? uh, for a lot of our work uh, we use what is called the raised cosine window or often called the hand window H A N N. This is not to be and sometimes I mean usually also uh, referred to as the Hanning window. Okay. Unfortunately, there is another uh, window called the Hamming window, and uh, uh, you know, so often a source of uh, in confusion. So it's always better to refer to this as the Han window. This is easy to remember simply because it's uh, okay. This kind of looks like this. This is uh, there are m samples here, okay, and this is one plus. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's one plus cosine of two pi m by you understand. And then there and there's some uh, there's some normalizing factor, okay, which I forget at this time. So that's not important. Hmm? Does it make sense? All right. So what you do? So this is you know clearly and legally a a window where you know you emphasize the middle portion and de-emphasize the side portion, right? So if I took a pure uh, sinusoid, right? So if I if my input was chosen correctly to lie on a bin to begin with okay we should see what happens i'm sorry this is let me call this n so instead of taking the fft of the input sequence n uh, s of n what we are doing is multiplying the record by this window function which is of this form you understand the motivation for the shape okay because you want to emphasize the guys in the middle and de emphasize the guys at the side so you want some sort of function which is high in the middle and low on the sides okay and as i said there are any number of ways of generating functions which are high in the middle and low on the side and each of them corresponds to one uh, you know one window uh, you know named after one guy or the other all right uh, with uh, uh, some specified properties hmm? so as far as the mechanics of computation are concerned i will take the sequence s of n okay multiply it with this window function w of n and then take this and pa- and then compute the discrete fourier series which is done through the fft algorithm okay and i will get a bunch of coefficients that you know uh, that i am used to all right so if i the one question is what happens when i actually put in a tone which is on on a frequency bin right where it is not uh, what do you call uh, where there is no discontinuity to begin with if i put a tone and then go through this uh, uh, i mean if i deliberately apply a window what would i expect so for example if i had a sine wave a sin let me 2 pi by 1024 let me take the earlier example this is my input and then i multiply this by the window which is 1 plus cos 2 pi n by 1024 this is the window okay so what do you expect to see in the spectrum if i multiply i mean uh, 
So, when I multiply this, you just, you know, carry out the multiplication. So, I will get something of the form A sin 2 pi by 1024 times 129 n. Correct? Plus A by 2 times sin 2 pi by 1024 times 128 is the science correct? Plus 128n by 1024 plus a by 2 sine 2 pi by 1024 times 130n. Okay? So, if I uh, and uh, so this is also a periodic waveform. Okay? So, you can see clearly that even though the input tone had only one frequency component at 129 by 1024 times fs, okay, when you do the, when you compute the Fourier series of this windowed thing, you see not only the, the tone that you put in, but one on the left and one on the, and one on the right. And is this to be expected or is this uh, shocking? Huh? It is to be expected. Why? Why is this? Uh, this have to be expected. What is the spectrum of the window? What is the discrete uh, uh, Fourier transform of the window function? It is delta plus. Uh, there is some component at the first uh, uh, this thing, right? At omega, there is a there is an impulse at uh, at uh, zero. There is an impulse at one bin here and this uh, you know another bin there. Okay. So please note that. Okay. So when you Multiply the this two. The, I mean, this is to be expected. This is not something strange, all right? And you can see that the fundamental has leaked onto two neighboring bits. Okay, corresponding to the width of the main lobe. All right. Okay, but on the but you will find that uh, as, I, as you can expect even if there was discontinuity in I mean this is a special case where there is no discontinuity in the the input sequence is nice and clean and the, uh, the aim of this example is to illustrate the fact that even if you put in a clean tone because of the Fourier transform of the window the window will cause the energy in this tone to disperse ok for a hanging window it causes things to disperse to one bin on the left end one bit on the right. Okay. If there was a discontinuity, for example, if this was 1029.001, then what will happen? The energy will disperse. Okay. And there will be leakage in the FFT. Other bins will also have energy. However, you can expect this to be smaller than the rectangular window simply because If I just use a rectangular window, if there is a discontinuity, that discontinuity will remain once I make a periodic exchange. But now this window is 0 at both ends. So, the, the magnitude of the discontinuity is actually 0. Okay? There will be discontinuity of the slope and so on, which will cause some leakage. But that can be expected to be a lot smaller than using a rectangular window. Okay, so tomorrow I will uh, I, I'll just uh, compute the stuff and you know plot these things uh, so that you have a feel for it. Uh, I think I will stop here.